this is a complex case. I mean, it's combination of various types of scaffold non-union. Actually, uh, we tend to see more of scaffold non-unions than acute fractures also here uh, because very few of them really come at the acute situation or a lot of them are managed by already by other uh, orthopedic colleagues of ours. So acute fractures, only when it goes into non-union or associated ligament injuries or proximal pole fractures or re-surgeries, these are the ones which we more often see here. So this is a 25-year-old male uh, with two months post-injury and his pre-op x-ray shows fracture lines like this. What will be the plan of uh, approach or generally? Uh, at two months? Huh? Yeah. I would uh, like to go for CT of wrist. Okay. To see any cavitation formation. Okay. So actually, in this case, uh, we did uh, two months. Uh, this thing CT I could not because he had clinically he had tenderness, snuff box tenderness was there, and then instead of a CT, we decided to go with the arthroscope we checked with the union status so we put a scope there we found the non-union site was still visible clinically he had tenderness so we did uh, this thing so either way is fine if we can do a ct scan it's good or uh, because in his x-rays this was the x-ray at the at two months duration so that prompted us because of his pain status as well so we did a percutaneous screw fixation these are the arthroscope portals which we could see from the uh, scaffold non union site. So, either of them is good. This is what was the status of union at the eight weeks duration. Any comments? Does the initial gap, gap troubles you uh, in the immediate post op? Immediate, no. Means uh, immediate post op, uh, no, because th that's where sometimes I'm very confident with the scope earlier. I never used to. Uh, I also used to do CT and this thing. This just gives me uh, two minutes. Uh, this thing, I put a scope, check the, after fixing it also, I put a scope and check whether the compression is there or not. So especially these type of fractures. If at all, I have a doubt or else if I feel the feel is good, I just accept that. So this is what was the one of the when I was searching like this like similar question doctor I think Averill asked me about this thing when do you consider screw fixation or when they come late because ninety percent of the fractures do come to they don't come on the day one they come only after two weeks or one month or even late so you can consider screw fixation only in this thing in these situation delay in treatment less than one year from injury undisplaced as demonstrated as where Amit was telling me, the CT scan, undisplaced as demonstrated on CT scan, no humpback deformity, less than one millimeter displacement, a stable fracture fixation, that is a waist fracture, no fracture site, motion on live fluoroscopy. This is another factor which you could use. No signs of avascularity if you have done an MRI and there's no signs of avascularity. But however, this point is nowadays questionable. And minimal to no bone resorption, less than one millimeter to two millimeter, or sclerosis less than one millimeter. So this is where we use percutaneous fixation, even if it is late. And uh, pre-op CT can give us more inform information on the fracture orientation, a carpal alignment or a scaphoid deformity to be corrected by using KYS as joystick, adequate preparation of the non-union site if at all you feel that's not gone into non-union, and central placement of screws. Supplemental KYS can be used as scaphocapitate or radiolunate for unstable non-unions. That was for the first case what I thought uh, because I read of when we were doing about uh, late presentations. So this is case two. Or do you want to discuss anything on case one or shall we go ahead with the case two? Uh, any other question from faculty? And, okay, carry on. 30-year-old male on cast from past three months following injury on outstretched hand. 
So he was already on cast, and this is a situation with a cast on three months. Proximal pole fracture. What will be our options? So uh, probably it is uh, means it is proximal pole scaffold fractures and uh, uh, either it is in cast so I am able to see the more uh, means white is shadow in the proximal pole yeah and uh, so I would uh, like to confirm it that uh, something is happening means non-union so probably I would go for uh, MRI the role of MRI next is like with uh, how much importance do you will we give MRI for the role of MRI in these situations because non-union is ends are resolved here non-union is proved now you want to look for the vascularity vascularity of the proximal okay how much importance would you like to give for the vascularity of the proximal pole uh, to be frank uh, uh, MRI will give you the clue that uh, the proximal pole is going to a vascular or not. Uh, otherwise, we will confirm it uh, uh, during interoperative period. Okay. Uh, nowadays, a lot of literature, uh, because even I think I even I have done an MRI for this patient or it was this thing. MRI next is whether only MRI or contrast MRI. If you're really looking at vascularity, what would you want to do? Contrast yeah. MRI would be better. Yeah, contrast MRI definitely shows the vascularity of this thing. So this is what does the MRI showed. The proximal pole a vascularity. So prob uh, before we go into problems in managing this case, but there are good number of papers which have come up from past four years telling that MRI significance of M uh, means MRI has got no role in dictating the uh, treatment of line. It might tell you avascular or non-vascular, but it really doesn't dictate because there are enough number of papers nowadays published. A simple bone grafting, you don't need a vascularized stuff. A simple bone grafting is good enough to manage these situations. There are a lot of uh, literature on this. I don't know how many of you have read or agree with this or have you come across these type of uh, situations or papers where there are a lot of papers coming on this. looking at the problems in managing uh, these fractures so first is vascularity where you guys were telling so which i have told now that it is really means not i really don't uh, give so much value nowadays to this mri about the vascularity i don't uh, judge them with that what graph to use next is whether you want to use vascularized graph basically if you have that issue whether one two intercalated or you want to use a graph from the iliac crest what are the fixation options? Because considering that fragment is so small, what will be on these headings? What will be your uh, or the faculty other uh, this thing faculty's uh, options on managing this on these three headings? Vascular graft will be better in this case, in this condition. Hmm. One and fixation option, I think, even a K wire or a thin guided, uh, I mean, a smooth K wire, one or two K wires would hold it in the place along with the graft. I okay. think that would be enough rather than putting a screw. And uh, uh, as the pro, uh, fragment is quite thin hmm. or uh, small, it may uh, in fact fracture or it may give way. So I feel two, one or two. Uh, guide guide wires would be enough to hold it. What will be the size of K wires you would want to think of? Point eight, point five, or point eight. Okay. Okay. So vascularity. Okay. Different opinion. Graft. Uh, vascularized graft. So fixation options. 
even either of them uh, any other if at all you are keen on putting screws anything else you want to like if you want to put a screw itself do you have any preference in this or you will never touch screw i would or rather be happy with only k wires or it's even sound. is there any configuration which you follow whenever you are doing for k wires of these type of fractures if less than the profile if uh, less than 2.4 mm available hmm. then i think uh, uh, we can opt for a lesser profile screw okay you know any company who is providing less hmm. than that size i have no <laughs> okay okay anybody else <clears throat> uh, in personally uh, uh, i will go for uh, uh well, okay, bone grafting and kyr fixes and only uh, any configuration in kyr uh 1.2 mm no what KYR. is the configuration is there any specific configuration you want to uh, the, means there are various lot of them just pass only from this proximal pole to distal pole or do you have any any anything else additional kyrs you want to use or only that you want to stick no only uh two k wires okay so, I may I may put in a radial lunate wire also, just to have a better uh, stability of the proximal fragment. Okay, so these type of fractures, your uh, K wires can be done. But one thing is, we commonly, uh, whenever we are doing such a thing, your configuration usually you have to put from distal pole to the sorry from distal pole to proximal pole to the lunate, not radial lunate wires. That is one thing which is quite often recommended. Skefo lunate wire, so that is uh, one recommendation because you want the entire unit to act as a single unit because the distal pole again at that fracture site it again starts struggling. So if you put that wire and along with that you could complement with skefo capitate wire as well, that is one thing. So it acts as a triangle wherein it acts as a single unit. Even if the wrist moves inside, it will be a very stable configuration. So that is one thing. Second thing is. There are 1.8 mm K wires. KLS Martin has got that's the only company in India which is available which has got 1.8 K wires. Sorry, uh, uh, headless screws, not the this thing. So we could use that as well. So here I was also earlier used to do a lot of vascularized bone grafts. So use this one two intercompartmental tackle, and this is the 1.8 uh, K wire means uh, KLS uh, headless screws which I've used. So that went on to a good union, 12 weeks post-op. So tips, use vascularize for proximal pole, smaller screw, 1.8 are available, k wires is an option, and vascularized, this is what I was telling, non-vascularized. Nowadays, these type of proximal pole fractures also, I don't open it, I do arthroscopic, put only bone grafts and put multiple k thin k wires. So they do quite well. Even even if the proximal pole shows AVN, there I have got a good series of now proximal pole AVN with managed with only uh, arthroscopic bone grafting. Any questions on that, or shall we go to the third case? Uh, arthroscopic, uh, sorry, uh, arthroscopic uh, assisted bone grafting, and yes, then sir. fixation also arthroscopic assisted or under CM. Uh, uh, scopy assisted with the ski, see, uh, it's percutaneous fixation, not uh, open, all percutaneous, percutaneous, all percutaneous, percutaneous, all percutaneous. Okay, yes, okay. sir. So, uh, uh, do you excise your non union by arthroscopically? Yes, so you use either shavers and even curates, you can do a good job with that and pack it with a cancellous bone graft and then. If you want, I can show a video also on that if at all you have finally time permits. Yes. So, Dr. Darshan, in this particular case, you waited for three months. So, what is uh, uh, how long you would I wait? did not I did not wait, he came, but ideally three months is okay. 12 weeks is of immobilization is reasonable for proximal pole, it's longer duration. But uh, that is what is a recommended one. Maybe in this case, it was much more obvious earlier. It's a, because the kind of resorption what we see, 
uh, what I saw in this, maybe I would have taken a call bit early itself. Because proximal pole, I hardly put a cast. I always put, I always fix proximal pole fractures. Do you routinely do contrast MRIs? Or have you stopped doing? No, I, I don't do MRIs now. Unless, but they end to enter my clinic with MRI films. So it's all referred. When they are referred, it is already thought that, okay, he would require, and that is a still the concept. I stopped believing in that avascularity of, uh, this thing MRI, unless they are very old and non-unions, like five years, this thing, more than the MRI, I don't try to, uh, I counsel them that chances of non-union, if it is so old, five years, seven years, non-union, young chaps, like 25 years, 27 year old guys, they would have had non-unions. So I caution them that non-union is a little bit of higher status because the time duration lag. And, but I go ahead and fix it. Any questions or should we go to case third case? I think we can proceed. Okay, sir. Yes. Yeah. This is a 27 year old male, injury to the wrist 15 months back, not taken treatment, now has pain. So, this is how 15 months you can see in this view, it's all, all uh, not at all visible, but whereas here you can see there is loss, uh, resorption, and sclerosis at the end of this fracture site. So not much displaced actually, even it was just the only thing is it was like 15 months was one criteria. I did not have the courage to just put a screw because a lot of literature says within one year, but this chap, I wanted to put this thing because the profile here looked okay, but here he had a lot of sclerosis at the fracture site. So we did this at arthroscopic. This is what is the fracture non-union site, which we are assess the, this is a non-union site. I'm probing that area. That's a fibrous tissue at the non-union site, which I'm trying to pull out. So basically, I use a shaver, I clear up all the non-union site until I see cancellous or the bones on either end. So it's a mixture of both the shaver and the curette I use. So this is how the non-union, after curettage, you can see this is the bone non-union site you can see. That's a distal pole. This is a, this is a distal pole. That's a proximal pole. I'm using curette, you can see. I'm literally taking the scope inside that you can see you're seeing from above so the proximal pole the distal pole and your probe is here so and nice curettage you can see that uh, one or two attempts which have been made for the ky passage also you can see that that shows a good cancellous bone there and now you can see the profile that's a curve of the scaphoid that's a waist level of the fracture site so after this we tend to fill that area with uh, a lot of uh, bone graft. I take bone graft usually from like J needle I use. So from the iliac crest I take rather than from the distal radius. So you get nice compacted bone there, which is already compacted and which can be passed into the uh, recipient area. So this is how we pass through that. So this is the scope in the mid-carpal portal. This is the 3-4 portal. This is the mid-carpal radial. And this is how, where I put the, pass the, bone graft through that. So at the end of the procedure, these are the portals and this is what is the closure site. Just a couple of stitches there, minimal scar. And that is the screw in that side. Two months follow-up. Surprisingly, the union rates are very faster compared to this because you can see visible bone formation there compared to the uh, open method here, these things. So the advantages are you could assess a thorough adjustment of the wrist. You are Basically, I'm convinced with the fact of biological environment. I'm not cutting anything here. That is what m makes me, I mean, I'm more convinced with that hardly. I am just retaining the entire capsule of the tissues and the circulation around that and instilling only the nice cancellous graft and immobilization from that. So delayed non-union, this is a treatment algorithm what we generally follow, delayed non-union, mini open established waste, no deformity, open repair or autogenous or arthroscopy assisted, humpback deformity, always volar approach and bone graft. Either you could use a combination of a cortical cancellous and a cortical strata as well, intercalated wedge. And proximal non-union pole, 
that is viable, usually dorsal approach, headless, open bone grafting fixation with headless screws, avascular non-union. Again, these are the options which we have tried, but nowadays, as I told, I don't strictly follow that. Any questions on that? Uh, do you regularly do CT in these cases? Because I found that a lot of bone resorption is there if uh, fracture is more than one year old. Yeah, yeah, I, I do that uh, because it gives me two things. One thing is humpback deformity because as I told, they would have united and still causing pain. So that is where uh, CT is helpful. If I have doubt, if I can't see really a fracture line in that and still patient has pain and previously documented that he had got a scaffold fracture, I would definitely do a CT. I have not corrected a humpback deformity. I would say that it's united, but you have this. I have still not corrected a humpback deformity. Okay. Uh, is uh, if you feel that it is united, but it is painful, and mm. in X-ray you see some cavities. Mm. So how you will proceed now? Uh, I have not done many of them. One case I had like this. He had some small cyst along this thing, long-standing, almost uh, five years. Uh, but even the unine, only one side it could. I just put a this thing. What is it? Scopy assisted, curated that area and put pure bone graft, and it went on to union well. Okay. What yes. options? Next one, next case. 25 yes. year old male, pain in right wrist, underwent surgery for scaphoid fixation. Nine months back, percutaneous fixation, it was done. Now has pain in right wrist, mild swelling, range of movement 80 degree, palm flexion 80 degree, terminally painful. This is the X-ray. What are the problems? What will you guys plan for or suggest for? I think the main problem is with the stability with regards to the screw size. Yeah. That is one correct. There's a lot of lysis also around this. I don't know. Around the screw. That is also was a bit, I was worried about that as well, infection. But there was no, clinically, there was no local signs of infection. But apart from that, yeah, definitely stability. The screws, just not screw size. These are like some of these Indian companies where the shaft thread of screws is very thick. And these are not generally 2.4. They might be a little bit more thicker, 2.8 or 3 mm, something like that. So these are, can be quite problematic in our population, I feel. That means we should be really think, uh, means, uh, think twice before using anything more than 2.4 mm screws. What do you suggest now? What to do now? Yes, so I can see that there is some rounding of the edges also. Hmm. So I'd rather remove the implant, uh, curate the bone ends well, put in a bone graft. I mean, I'll do open. Hmm. And uh, I'd maybe prefer K wires in this because already the canal is hollowed out because of the previous screw. Hmm. So to be on the safer side, maybe I'll go for uh, K wires only. Any other opinion? Any other options? Removal of the hardware. Yes, sir. I think arthroscopically assisted, if you can see, there is no, you can rule out infection. Mm. Uh, and if there are not a lot many cysts, I think mm. graft can be placed and again a larger size screw, like longer. I mean, not a larger one. Mm. A lengthier screw. Lender, lengthier one. Yes, lender sir. screw, if it can hold on to the ends well, mm. I think that would be more stable uh, fixation as uh, the history is almost non union now, without a uh, screw and holding on or believing on only KYS for a longer period hmm. won't be won't be a good idea because then immobilization will increase. Yeah, uh, period of immobilization. So I think a longer screw removal of the hardware, put in a graft, and then uh, check the stability under scope. 
and yeah. then limited immobilization and then your uh, restoration of the physiotherapy and uh, restoration of the ROM. Yes. Anything else, Amit? Uh, I'm expecting, uh, uh, means uh, screw removal may be difficult. Hmm. Why? Why do you feel so? Uh, either we have to remove from the fracture site uh, or uh, luckily uh, means we may get uh, entry point, then it may hmm. be okay. Hmm. And uh, then infection may be troublesome, but I will do open only hmm. and uh, lot of bone graft and K wire. Okay. Okay. So looking at this, there are another few more points, which I thought lucency was there. This screw is short. So that actually one good thing in, in favor of means that helped me to treat because I still have so much of bone to for my screw to engage. If it were to be longer one, definitely I would have also used a K wire. I thought, okay, this can be managed with a screw because he has quite a significant amount of pole still left behind here. And I also decided to do an open only itself because because of this lucency, I did not try too much to open on this side because I'll lose the distal pole. I opened the fracture site, it opened up easily, then I got it out from the fracture site, the implant. So that reduced my chance of damaging the distal pole or else I would have damaged that, then none of the screws will hold. So small tips, but I think that was helpful to revision surgery. So just uh, when I again saw this, this was one of the earliest revision surgeries I was doing. I was quite keen well, how many cases uh, these things, what is the percentage of uh, this thing, second surgery for non-union? It's almost 8 to 10%. Again, it's a Western literature. We don't know here. It might be even more. What to do with that? Options are osteosynthesis or salvage. As I told, I opened it. I, op I took out the screw from the non-union. And in that X-ray also, there was a lot of loss of height is one thing i will just show you this this thing you can see the lunate is almost gone into dc deformity and this is really humpback type you can see here also you can see the dorsal rim of the lunate till here so that i had to restore that as well so that means i need distraction and a lot of bone graft opened it here restored again now i got the lunate when well aligned and a good lengthy screw bone graft i had to i used distal radius itself that i could manage it that was quite good finally went on to almost three months follow up went on to good union so this is what is a paper on the revision surgeries like uh non-vascularized non-unions repair so they were they had this did this uh, after vascularized or non-vascularized repair it's almost there telling now the union status of the revision status is almost 8 to 10 percent. So they did the study, 4,000 uh, patients they did and vascularized out of that, 358 vascularized, 3,000 non-vascularized. Failure rate of vascularized was 5 percent, non-vascularized 6.1 percent, not much of a difference. Of course, age and comorbidities did not affect the bone type. So these were some of the cases or different varieties of uh, this thing which I could discuss. Mm -hmm.